All right. So we have Sal on the screen. We are not seeing Brady's hand. However, we will be seeing it in the tournament tomorrow. We're going to have a much better overlay than you see here. I am going to be casting alongside Tucker. More information pinned at the top of chat. We have White Rain Brady throwing down the Star Lord, predicting the Quinjet that Sal throws down on turn one. So I have been someone who has been vocal about not needing Quinjet in these decks. I feel like it is a bit excessive. I don't think you would necessarily need the extra greed. However, this is where we're at. Brady gets a Sebastian Shaw down on Muir Island turn two, already with 15 power in a single lane. He is off to a huge start. He also snapped. Sal is going to have to make up some ground here, but he does have the Dark Hawk in hand. So that is something we're going to be seeing a lot of tomorrow. Grandmaster moving the Star Lord to the middle location, sniping. That is a 12, now 14 power Star Lord matching the Red Skull. My God. We are off to an incredible start here. Sal throwing down the Dark Hawk already. He's not scared of Shang-Chi. He needs to get back in this game. And that is what he does. Brady, no play, but that Shaw is going to get a bit of a boost from the Muir Island once again. We're now going into turn five. So Sal is has no answers here for the Shaw and the Star Lord, but he is winning handily on the left. He's got to expect the Shang Chi coming down at some point, so he's going to take advantage of his priority here to Mystique the Dark Hawk before it goes down. He does indeed pull off the Mystique. Sal got an incredible hand here: the Quinjet, the Dark Hawk, the Mystique, and he Cerebros just for good measure. Get another body down there on Muir Island to soak up some stats. Blob is coming down, weakening the Mystique and the Darkhawk just enough here. Going into the final turn. Will Brady be able to compete here? Now, Sal does have the Rogue to handle that Blob. If you guys don't know the interaction, Rogue will steal the Blob and then trigger the on-reveal ability again. So will Brady see this out for four cubes or is he going to retreat for two? This is a very filthy play here, Omega Man. Rogue steals the Blob, triggers again. Blob goes down to nothing. Oh no, Blob keeps his power. Interesting. I didn't realize that. We learned. He goes for the Abs Man on the Blob, and then Rogue to steal the Mystiqued Darkhawk. It's not enough, but is it actually? It is to win Tiebreaker. Brady takes it at the end there with a crazy play rogue on the dark hawk wow what a turn of events the absorbing man winds up copying nothing because the rogue stole the blob's ability so abs man had nothing to copy there and then brady's rogue steals the mystique dark hawk all these cards copying abilities playing into each other and that was a wild first round sal down four points Four cubes, excuse me. Once again, drawing the Darkhawk again. I have played Sal a couple times in some Arisham Mirrors, and he has had the Darkhawk all the time. Brady pushing the envelope here, snapping. Sal is concerned. Rightfully so. Brady is a menace. Brady is actually my favorite to win the whole damn tournament because I believe this card was made for him. This is one of those cards. Look at that. A six-power Makari coming down immediately here. So again... Sal in a good position with the Dark Hawk and the Mystique in a 24 card deck still manages to draw both of them. But perhaps there will be more Arishim tournaments in the future. And wow, a huge blow to the Dark Hawk as Lamentis comes down. That big old bird is now just sitting at a paltry five power with no cards left in the deck. Unbelievable. This is a crazy match. It's a shame this isn't a tournament match here, although it could be a preview of things to come. Brady <laughs> forced to play his Uatu. Sal bringing back the Maria Hill and the Black Knight, trying to get himself some more value, some more cards in hand with the Maria Hill, perhaps. But he goes, whoa, he snaps a bit too late before the turn could finish. Legions, the Wakandan Embassy, buffing the hand. Brady only has four cards in hand. Sal with six, so he gets the benefit there. That Darkhawk is still not up to snuff, though, but a 1-6 Electra, a 1-6 Black Knight, and a 1-6 Maria Hill. Hanging on to the Mystique. Not sure if he should just play it for stats or hang on to copy 
something he might get from Maria Hill. I don't know. I don't think there's anything too valuable that he could get there. But it looks like he is going to play out the Mystique just for some stats. Is he going to stick this out? He already snapped, so he can't retreat. The snap from the previous turn did not go through yet. So there is going to need to be a four cuber here unless White Wayne Brady retreats. Sal dropping all the emotes. Brady remaining calm, cool, and collected and retreating for two. All right, he's back in the game here. Um, we are seeing Fisk Tower as our first location here. Brady smartly playing the Martyr on Fisk Tower because if she was played anywhere else, that would be bad news moving into that Fisk Tower. Sal with nothing to play. He again, for the third game in a row, draws the Darkhawk in his opening hand. Impressive. Very impressive. I wish I had that kind of luck. I am never able to draw the cards I need to. A special, in a 12 card deck, never mind a 24 card deck, but Sal has that ability. He gets his Quinjet from the Hell's Kitchen. It's turn three, is it still worth playing? It looks like he's gonna go with that and the Rock Slide here. Pump the Darkhawk just a little bit more. Brady, not off to the best start with Martyr and Wolfsbane, but still a bit better than Sal. Wow, Bella says, thanks for the gift sub. One million tokens coming your way this February 30th. <laughs> Very nice, Bella. Thanks for stopping in, though. Hope you're having a good time. Sal does have the ability to play the Darkhawk here. He's also got the Mockingbird in hand. I wouldn't be surprised if Brady tries to bait out a Shang with that Warpath and tries to dodge it. But I think we all know the Shang is better served against Blob and or Darkhawk. There you go. Feature Engineer on Marvel Snap. I will absolutely drop you a follow there, Bella. Brady using his Taskmaster to copy the Warpath. Interesting decision there. It's another 10 power, 410. Definitely not bad stats. Excuse me. I am not the only commentator outlaw. I am the co-commentator. The main commentator, the host of the event, is going to be none other than the Pirate King, Tucker himself. So if you guys are not following Tucker already, make sure you do that. I'm sure everyone here is as well. Devilish coming in with the raid. Welcome in. Devilish play. Can we get a shout out for Devilish, please, as well? Devilish, I'm in the middle of casting a match here between Sal and Brady. I plan on doing casting all stream here. Brady drops the Cosmo, rogues the Darkhawk. This is all a battle of priority here. The Darkhawk goes down. Brady's winning left. The rogue comes back, steals the rogue again. <laughs> So the Darkhawk changes sides twice, and the Shang-Chi blocked by the Cosmo, but Martyr goes mid and loses the left. Sal takes it for four. Wow, the Martyr screwing Brady over. Unbelievable. So, a lot just happened there. We had Bla uh, Brady, with priority, play the Rogue to steal the Darkhawk, and played the Cosmo to prevent the Shang-Chi from hitting the Taskmaster. Then, Sal rogues the Rogue back, I wonder if that hit Blob if he would have lost there. But the Martyr winds up screwing Brady at the end of the game. That is her ability. <laughs> These are definitely some wild ass games here. All right, we are moving on to the next round. Sal is up after a surprising turn of events from the Martyr. He is up six cubes to four. He did not draw the Darkhawk though, shockingly enough. We did not see a Darkhawk draw from Sal this game, but he does have the Arishim in the starting hand. Mockingbird getting discounted here by the monster. He's got the Mystique on deck ready to go. Nothing from Brady yet. We have not seen him emoting the final location as well. As you can see from the deck tracker here, Brady is indeed running the Uatu. Uh, Brady is a notably unique cook, I'll say. All right, Brady, we see our first Loki of the set so far. Surprisingly enough, a Loki on turn three. So Brady got himself four loki cards there. Discounted heavily. As well as that additional energy. Bra uh, Sal's hand looking pretty rough here. He's going to go Forge to buff the kitty. He's got the Nocturne to potentially mess up a New York play. see a hidden Brady card here on turn four. Sal draws Surfer. He's got the Nocturne. He's got the Mystique. So he can get a little bit of Silver Surfer value, but nothing spectacular. I wonder if he's going to choose to hide the Mystique under the Dark Dimension here. 
But it looks like he's going to hide the Surfer instead. Not a bad idea. He's going to get a little bit of value out of it. But he's going to change the New York now with the Nocturne. He feels confident enough to snap here. Brady, again, with those Loki cards, probably just sitting on those cheap cards. Brady snapping back. This could be the final game. Four cubes on the line. Will Sal stick this out or will he retreat? It looks like he's staying firm here. Here we go. Nocturne changes it to Vormir. The White Widow drops into the Vormir. That could have been worse. It definitely could have been worse. And what is the other card here from Brady? It's Nick Fury. Okay, so all things considered, not a terrible change there in Brady's favor. Sal now, unfortunately, has to play something into Vormir that will die. So that Widow's Kiss is going to do some damage. Right is looking lost here. He still has the middle lane and the left lane. The Surfer will buff the Nocturne, but it's still not going to be enough to win that lane unless he's able to get rid of that Widow's Kiss somehow. How is he going to win here? He's sticking this out. The Shang-Chi goes mid, takes out the monster. It looks like it's going to be over for Sal. Brady should be able to take this in the middle lane and the right lane. The left doesn't matter. We're moving on. Brady taking the lead here. A big old blob on the left, nuked by the Shadow King, but not enough to win the other lane. Sal down to his last two cubes. Brady back on top with four. Yes, that was a very unfortunate Nocturne for Sal there. Screwed him up with that White Widow. Good order from Brady as well. If he played it the other way around, he might have had a hard time finishing that off. Sal gets the turn one Thena. Thena actually one of those cards that I think is sneaky good in Arishem. Because oftentimes you can get her out on turn one, as you see here. Uh, and you're typically playing two cards. Brady goes with a Tempo Beast. Very interesting call here. And if the Arishem wasn't random enough, now we have Tarnax sitting here in the middle location. Let's get nuts. We're going to just see some absolute chaos here. Cards transforming into other cards. Shocker turns into the Lizard. Crystal turns into... Colson. Very solid pull there for Brady. He's got two... I'm sorry, for Sal. Two cards... Two Colsons on his side here. So the Mockingbird's cheap. The Nick Fury's not going to get a whole lot of value with his hand stuffed the way it is. I bet he's wishing he had Quinjet right now, folks. All the Eternals synergize with each other aside from Makari. Yeah, I can see that. There's definitely some synergy here. Sal opting to drop the Mockingbird early. A 3-9, still some very solid stats. Brady goes for the Captain Marvel, and we get another Tarnax! Absolute madness! The Arishim Anarchy is real. So here we go, Sal opting to transform the Sandman in the middle location. This is going to probably wind up backfiring on him a little bit. He's not getting a whole lot of Thena value, and he won't next turn either. Brady goes Black Knight into Iron Fist, Uatu... On the right location, moves to the left, transforms into Kitty, and Rogue on nothing transforms into Magic. All right, so we're extending the game. We have some more opportunities for Chaos. And here comes the Sandman transforming into the Arrow. Brady would have been locked up mid had not he got a Kitty Pride instead. Yes, Brady is running Uatu because the, the idea behind it is you get more value from Uatu if he stays in your deck. Unfortunately, he has drawn him a couple times, but you are able to see that right location regardless of whether you draw him or not. Brady dropping the Dr. Octopus after the surprise Heimdall. Absorbing Man hits the Heimdall, moves himself. The Heimdall does move over to the middle lane, which could be some good value for Sal. He's going to be forcing Brady to play in that middle lane if he wants a chance to win it. Sal, unfortunately, not able to use the Nocturne to turn off the Limbo, because you have to play it down first, then move it. But it looks like he's going to go Nocturne, Nick Fury, finally getting some Thena value here on turn 6. The Dracula wouldn't do a whole lot for him with those weak cards in hand, but he is getting the Nick Fury, so perhaps he'll get some value from it last turn. Doesn't quite look like it. Taskmaster, again, only copying 10 power. Sal goes into the final turn here with priority. 
It looks like it's going to be as simple as a blob. Brady probably scared to play into Tarnax. Sal feeling confident in that lane. Left is looking quite strong as well, so he's opting to just blob here on the right with his final two cubes. The Captain Marvel could have some value here, but it's probably not going to be enough to win mid unless something crazy happens here. 18 power blob, Absorbing Man, the Taskmaster for an additional 10 power left. He's up by one on the left side. Brady not able to take it here. And the M'Baku jumps out for extra credit. Not enough power on the right. The blob was too strong. We're going to be seeing a whole lot of that coming down to the final game here. That is some Brady tech. You guys might be getting a preview of one of his premier strategies tomorrow. So if anyone out there is participating in this tournament, some good scouting information here. Sal dropping the turn one. Korg finding the rock. Bella clearly on Sal's side here. Rohan, we are watching Call Me Sal versus the White Wayne Brady in an Arisham mirror match. Casted by yours truly in preparation for the tournament tomorrow. More information pinned at the top of chat. Brady loves himself some U.S. agent. So White Palace gave Brady a blob and Sal got the Taskmaster, I believe, from the White Palace. I missed that. Could you viewer battle someone? Absolutely, Buff Cat. We will get... A queue going probably after this game, but I'm just going to try and focus on this final match and then we'll figure it out. Sal opting to keep the Castle Blackstone under his control, able to play a blob on turn four. Filthy. Sal is actually set up really well here with the Taskmaster and the Mystique in hand. So the way this works, Mystique, very similar to Rogue, is able to copy the blob's ability and trigger the on reveal once again. It looks like he's going for Taskmaster first. I think Mystique is probably the play, though, because then you can Taskmaster the Mystique afterwards. But you're going to have to make sure your order is correct here. He won't be able to Taskmaster if he plays another card after it. I think the Mystique into the Taskmaster might just be the proper play here. It's You're, you're floating a whole lot of energy, but nothing else he's able to do is really going to make up for that power. So we got a Blob coming down on the left. Being discounted by the U.S. Agent a little bit, whereas the Mystique will not be affected by the U.S. Agent, only coming in at three cost. And just like that, Sal has taken the left side. He's got eight energy. He's able to go for a Taskmaster and an Agent Coulson here, keeping the Nocturne mid so as not to cause another situation like he did before. This is going to be very, very hard for Brady to come back from. A lot of power on Sal's side of the board. Switching it up at the last second here, going Coulson left just to continue to give himself a bit more. Nope. He's actually going Quinjet Sentinel, which is the correct play. That is a bit more power than just the Coulson. One more power than the Coulson. Again, not affected by the U.S. Agent because both of those cards are under the 456 cost. What is Brady going to do to try and win this one here? The White Wayne Brady... The favorite, in my opinion, to win the tournament. Can he overcome this? Another blob-powered card coming down on the right. Two cards for Brady. What's it going to be? It's a blob mid. I don't think that's going to cut it. Only gets to 32, and a rock. Sal takes it at the end. Winning mid by one with a casserole.